Hello, welcome back to the playthrough. It's been quite a while since I've played this game. I haven't been feeling the best lately, just mentally, you know. Um, if you know, I have recently just moved across the country and I'm staying in a temporary place um, until we can find our own place, which has been really, really difficult. So yeah, just just not having your own space kind of gets to you after a while so yeah um yeah i miss this game a lot um i i'm pretty sure that i've got a pretty good grasp of what has happened so far i don't re-watch these videos they're just so long um me editing them is really the extent of which i re-watch them again so um we did meet joyce joyce messier I think she's a representative for the board of the wild pines who owns the harbor um we got a bit of a quest from her she wants she suspects that there is a drug operation going on in the city which has been used to fund the strike so um the i the theory is that it's coming from one of the lorry drivers so we spend a lot of time talking to all the lorry drivers and i don't know i think we I think we found the culprit um it was really weird um the way that the last video ended i think it was kim that said oh this is our guy but we couldn't speak to him so i don't know i don't know where we go from here i'm guessing we go back and speak to joyce about it um even though kim doesn't want us to tell her the full extent of our investigation he wants to keep a little bit of those a little bit of that information to ourselves so yeah I'll go there and see if I don't know we can do that I also want to speak with the union workers at the whirling rags um, we have had them there for quite a while so I think it's time that we go speak with them and also we're waiting on Wednesday um, hopefully we can get to Wednesday on this video because a lot of things are happening on Wednesday we get to try the smoker's apartment again he wasn't home um and kim suggested we wait until the next day to come back i don't know why i don't know why we couldn't have just come back at a later stage on that same day i don't know so we'll get to speak with him and i think wednesday is the day that the drawbridge comes down um the drawbridge where that guy that was eating his salami was <laughs> so yeah um let's get right back into it I have the fan on as well, my little desk fan. Hopefully you can't hear it, but it's very hot here today, so I need the fan. So yeah, this so this was the 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 this vehicle here, whatever it is. Yeah, so apparently this lorry here is it a lorry? I don't know what a lorry looks like. Um yeah, so we're just going to go back and speak to Joyce and just see if we can progress through the quest. Oh. All around you, rain falls on the great city of Rivershaw. Rain drips from the eaves and floods the gutters, washing the filth away. The spring thaw must be here. The snow is melting. What am I doing? Looking up at the sky, cold water dripping from your hair. What do I see? Shake the shivers off. What do I see? Grey sky like great battleships, clouds colliding with one another. Rain falls down on the world. How does it feel? Your shirt sticks to your chest. The shoulders of your jacket grow heavy. The cold finds its way under your skin. You shiver, and the city shivers with you. You're not dressed for this weather. You should get an overcoat or a patrol cloak. Yeah, I think we have a singlet under our jacket. <laughs> what is in the west? What is in the east? What is in the north? What is in the sound? Motherfucker. I thought we know. We, we spoke to the gardener in the first video, and we got a little bit of a lay of the land from her. Um, what is in the west? Sheets of rain over the water. A flight of stairs leading into the ocean. Wave after wave washing the coast of Martinez, with its motorboats and gently swaying reeds. The ruins of a half-sunken sea fort crumble 
on an inlet beyond the Bay of Revachol, ghosts rise into the sky. Who are you, ghosts? What is down the shore? Run your fingers through your damped hair. <laughs> I can just picture him doing that. <laughs> Um, what is down the shore? Urban coastline, rain dripping off etonite covered roofs, cinder blocks left over from half finished construction, a defunct research and development building once seized by revolutionaries. An old wooden church stands on stilts above the water. And beyond that? Coal City, end of all lines. Who are you, ghosts? The skyscrapers of La Delta, the financial district. Faint golden light seeps from the office windows. Will you ever go there? Will I? No, you are just oh. one of the hundreds of thousands who watch them rise across the bay from Martinez every day. Run your fingers through your dampened hair. Your hair is an oily mess flecked Ew. with ash from neighboring coal plants. Smokestacks rise somewhere in the distance. What is it? What's in the east? There's a fleet on the corner. A, a plastic coat is folded into a small triangle under the counter by the window. Beyond that, the strike breakers have gathered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The great gates of the industrial harbor are locked. A chill runs down your back. <laughs> you shudder like an animal trying to shake water from its hide. Plant your teeth to stop shuddering. No, embrace the shivers. Shake your shoulders again. <laughs> you shudder, looking down at your feet. Dirty rainwater runs veins into the plaza snow. Two green snakeskin shoes stand <laughs> at attention mm. on the mosaic paving of the plaza. What's in the north? Capeside apartments. Tower blocks crowd one another. 4.46 millimeter bullets still lodged in their war-torn stone walls. Is that where we were last time? Hallways collapse from the mortar heads of a war that was lost long ago. Clotheslines go to waste in the rain. Radios play. The news at noon. And closer to here? A yard. Rain a falls yard. onto the roof of a woodshed. Coal leaks into a puddle beneath the feet of a dead man. He swings mm. from a tree, a gaping hole in his bare, rotting chest. The hole that we left, the hole that we shot in his body, trying to get him down the tree, is that the hole you're referring to? What's in the south? A traffic jam. Rain thrumming on the roofs of motor vehicles. Inside, drivers watch water streaming down their windshields. The statue of a king shudders. He too is cold. The canal bridge has been raised. What? Okay. Was that the statue that we we um we were looking at in the first video? Um we found we were um we learnt a lot of history about him. He spent all the treasury money. Apparently the rumor is that he sleeps on gold coated Feathers or whatever. Is that him? Is that where? That he's talking to? I don't know. What's on the other side? The road ascends. A raised motorway loops above the ghetto. Beneath its concrete columns, a sea of rooftops, woodwork, and tar stretches northward. Four-story buildings as far as the rain can fall. The snows melt in Jamrock. Where the hood? Where the hood? Where the hood at? Why am I not there? Shudder, look further. In the rain-swept distance, above the rooftops of Jamrock, a repurposed silk mill stands perched above the motorway exit. Precinct 41 hunches in the rain. Your vision blurs. You wipe your face with your hand. The rain stings your eyes, making you look up and blink. What's above? Coalition hero statics hang like apparitions under the cloud cover. Way up there, where rain forms, rotors flutter silently. Your sight clears. What's below? Collapsed storm drains, old sewage systems flooded with rainwater. Hidden weapon caches from the revolution. 
doors leading down to Leroyan, the catacombs to which, for three centuries, they delivered the blue-blooded dead. I wonder if we have to go down to the sewers. It's such a trope, isn't it, in games? I feel like every single game I play, there's a sewer section. This rain will not let up anytime soon. You should get a raincoat. There's a freight to the east. They sell them there. You. About my bill for tonight. Got the 20 real? Yeah, 20 real for the night. Good. You got the room for the night, but remember, you'll need another 20 real tomorrow. I know, God. Goodbye. Alright. Now let's go buy a coat for five dollars. We went to Frit 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 hey, Frit the other day, like last to look for a bag and I don't remember her selling clothes. So I don't I, I don't know. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says one bottle equals ten cents. What's this machine? Hmm? Oh, that's the tear machine. Yes, but what is it? I understand now, thank you. What is it? It's a machine for tear, you know. You find tear outside, like bottles or whatever, yeah. and put it in the machine, then it gives you money. I've never heard of that term before. I see. And how do I pick up tear from a tear machine? From the tear machine? You need a bag, Ooh. I guess. Okay. We used to have some, but we gave them all out, so. She shrugs awkwardly. Feel free to use it if you find a bag, though. I'm sure there are some out there. Oh. Really? I'm so excited. I thought she was going to give us a bag. Yeah, there are no clothes here, Kim. I don't know what you're talking about. Rory doesn't sell clothes either. But he doesn't. Um, I don't know. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? I spoke with the lorry man at the roundabout. Uh... Yeah, I spoke with the lorry. Word has travelled, yes, but nothing of real substance has surfaced yet, I gather. Wild Pines has eyes on the intersection, but not ears. One of the tall buildings overlooking the roundabout. It would give them a read on the entire quarter. It appears we are being monitored every step we take, colleague. Did we have any other business here? That's all for now. Okay. Now it's turning into a kind of a snow limbo, man. What's on your mind? I heard that one of the drivers is a woman, but I don't think she's here. Do you know this lady driver? I don't want to talk about that. He shifts around suddenly uncomfortable, then looks away. Why? Do you know something? What is it? I don't mean to pry, but I need your help. She may be involved with the drug business. Okay, let's change the subject. Um, no. What, what do you, you know? Man, I was hoping it isn't going to be her. All I can say is, she isn't around here anymore. She isn't some evil drug trafficker. And I don't know where she is. I asked you who's conducting the drug trade. You said you didn't know. Now you're saying you do. Who is this person? What's her name? Who is she to you? What does she look like? Um, I asked you. I didn't, man. I told you I was hoping it's not her. That she wouldn't be mixed up in it. He still is. Hoping. It's just wishful thinking on his part. Not trickery. It's true. We would have caught a lie. But a kind heart is tricky. Bah. Emotional rhetoric. 
He knew something and he didn't share it with you. That's a fact. Who is this person? What's her name? Thank God I don't know. People here call her the Lady Driver. She kept her name a secret. For me too. Now I see why. Who is she to you? A friend? An acquaintance. I don't know. She was the only person in this damn jam I could talk to. She's someone I don't want to rat out to the law, okay? What does she look like? A youngish woman. Gruff, but in a cool way. Cindy? <laughs> what color hair? Blue and violet. Dyed. It was violet when she got here. Blue before she went. Okay. Then she may have dyed it again. When did she leave? Damn, I don't want to... Please just let it go. Whatever she did, it can't be that bad. She's not a bad person, I know that much. We can't just let it go. It's part of a police investigation. That's how it always is with you, isn't it? All part of the investigation. It's my job. Tommy. The girl's troubled. If you hunt her down, she may not survive it. I can't have that on my conscience. It won't come to that. We won't pursue her on this. This is information only. I don't believe you. Leave us, it really is. You said she's troubled, how? Believe us. I just can't, man. I'm not naive. You said she's troubled, how? She's got the darkness in her. That young person's darkness when you think it's all over. And you're looking for a way out. She shared this with you? Yes. Which is why I don't want to snitch on her. It's not snitching. It's just a few questions. Come on, man. Life is just a joke. I was told everyone's afraid of her. You're not? I heard the rumors. I saw the other drivers looking at me strange when we talked. And she told me, too, that she's had a violent life. But I wasn't afraid of her, more like for her. Did this violent life include drug trafficking? Well, it looks like it did now. But we didn't talk about that. We talked about life, you know? She talked about her mind. Hold on, her mind. When she left, did she leave her lorry behind? Hold on, her mind. The way it worked. The trouble it was giving her. When she left, did she leave her lorry behind? Fuck, man. Go grill someone else with these questions, okay? There are plenty of drivers here who couldn't stand her, or were afraid of her. They'd be more than happy to rat her out. He's right. There are other options. The race man, for one. Wait, this guy says they're friends. Then, acquaintances. Mm. And he's okay with others ratting her out. Push Tommy, and it will break his heart. And his spirit. Don't expect you to be pals. Isn't he married? So you're alright with other So you're alright with others ratting her out. You just don't want your hands dirty. Put yourself in my shoes. I need this for another investigation too. It's important. I can't blow it. She's a suspect and I need you to tell me where she is, or I can't finish the investigation. Of course, Tommy. Fine, I will drop the matter for now. Find another way. So you are right with, uh, with others writing her out. Fine. I don't want to be a butcher. And I don't want to be a knight either. I just want to be a person who can sleep at night. A little fame wouldn't hurt too. Put yourself in my shoes. You're not going to put a bullet in your head if you blow it, are you? Because she's on the edge, man. Imagine it. An explosion. Of stars. Goodbye world of men, money, and machines. I'm not gonna force him, not yet anyway, only if I get desperate. Fine, I will drop them out for now, find another one. Thank you, friend. <sighs> wow, this makes me feel like I should pick up smoking again. Would help with my rhymes, too. You are smoking. I can see you smoking. Care to spare some change for a working step? Alright, that's all for now, bye. Alright, let's talk to this racist lorry driver again. Looking for something? 
I know you've been giving me the runaround. Fess up. Where's the lady driver? I don't know what you're talking about. He smirks. First, you knew Celia and didn't do it. Then why are you smirking? Just tell me who, which one's her lorry. Oh, alright then. <laughs> First, you knew Celia and didn't do it. He did something. He stole his employer's goods and another lorry man's job. He should be thankful for the tip. He's been expecting this. He's really puffed himself up. Then why are you smirking? Listen up, fuckwits. You don't scare me. You cops don't run Evachel West. You don't run Martinez. You don't run anything. Actually, we do. Just tell me who the goddamn driver is. So who does? You? Actually, we do. No. He means la puta madre. I know I can, but I'm just... A legendary, and not in a good way, crime boss from Jamrock controls what is probably okay. the most powerful organized crime outfit in Revachol West. Looks like the lieutenant has a plan. Let him do this. <laughs> yeah, him. This fits on the pavement. Cross your arms and nod. Who's La Puta? What are you doing, Kim? Let me handle it. Cross your arms and nod. Then I presume you are familiar with his peonies. Yeah, they're his little bitches. He's got them all over the unions. Not just the unions. He has peonies everywhere. Peonies. Some say he even has them in the RCM. Dirty fucking peonies who do anything for him. Multi-ethnic drug addicts. The lieutenant adopts a rodent time quality. Be cool, sire. He's getting into this. Say nothing. You're not peonies. You wouldn't be investigating a drug thing if you were. Aren't we? No, of course not. We are not peonies. But if we were, and one of Madre's drivers were to be stealing from him, then it's a good peonies job to find out who that is. He's surprisingly good at this. Not bad at all. Look at him lurching. It's not a hard job. It won't take a long time. It won't make Padre Madre angry. But a stupid fucking racist is standing in the way, protecting this fucking thief. I'm not scared of you or the mob. I'm under the protection of the Loriman and Carter's guild. You've seen that corpse in the ceramic armor there. Did his shitty little guild protect him? Mm -hmm. Nah, you wouldn't just leave him out there if you... He tries to light a fresh cigarette, but his hands are shaking now. The sentence simply ends. The lieutenant turns and gives you a barely perceptible nod. I've softened him up as best I could. Now it's on you to finish the job. Oh, really? 28%? Formidable. Make him tell you what he knows. Oh my god. Alright, what do we need? Um... Half-Life? Kim's bluff saw you sniffing her. Oh my god, we don't, we're not gonna get it. Oh, it's white, so we can retry it. The main thing oh. is to not overdo it. Even when you're trying to scare someone. The most important thing is, how does it look on your resume? Jigs up, I've got the goods on you. Why don't you and me step outside for a little talk? Yeah, okay. Look, I'm sorry, can you just tell me what you know? The jigs up, I've got the goods on you. We can't threaten him physically. We're very weak. We will die. We only have free help. The jigs up, I've got the goods on you. Oh yeah? And what goods are those? Uh, your racism? You know, your goods. There's some kind of homo thing? <laughs> no, no, of course not. Just tell me what you know. I don't really know where that came from. Yeah, maybe it is. I don't really know where that came the from. The lieutenant gives you a brief sideways <laughs> glance. Let's just go and ask Tommy, all right? We are wasting our time here. <laughs> oh my god. 
<laughs> Alright, bye. Do we have anything that gives us heart flight? Oh, it's in our physique. Makes you ultra attuned to the world. It is perpetual fear of your own check. Yeah, we are not going to get that. We are, we're way too weak for that. Shit. Uh, Kim, like, did such a good job too. And we just ruined it because we're so weak and pathetic. So what, now we have to force him? What about the sea land? Everything's still cool here, officer. Me? This man probably comes from Seagai, sometimes known as the Apricot Suzerainty, an archipelago in the Samaran Isola. I skipped the dialogue because I thought we'd already done that before. Uh, oh, we have done that before. But you're not a local. Very sharp, officer. I'm Serais. From the Seagai province of the Serais Empire? The Apricot Suzerainty, you know? Apricot Suzerainty calls to mind an era when the Seagai archipelago was colonized by Revachon. It's a bit of a slur, in other words. Vince, isn't that the name kind of insensitive? Isn't that name kind of insensitive? Yum, apricots are delicious. Man, this apricots business sounds complicated all of a sudden. Um, the apricot suzerainty is what the Seagai archipelago is commonly known as in Revachol. It's a bit of a fraught term, I'm sure you understand. No, no, apricots come from Seagai. My grandma used to grow them, but Seagai is a shithole. That's why I came to Revachol. Here's much better for an independent entrepreneur. Less laws. Speaking of, why not support an independent local entrepreneur? I send half my profits back to my grandma in Seagai. Well, if it's for his grandma, you should buy a lot of things. I'll leave you to it for now. <laughs> um, alright. Um... Now it's turning into a kind of a snow limbo, man. What's on your mind? Mind about your friend, the lady driver. What? But I told you she's my friend. Please don't make me give her up, detective. Get someone else. There's a ton of drivers here. She's a suspect, and I need you to tell me where she is, or I can't finish the investigation. I... I thought you were a different kind of cop. Something breaks in him as he stares into your eyes. The realization that you've used his friendliness and goodwill for your own ends. Remember, you're doing it for the bigger investigation. This is important. Relax. Ask. Where, where is the lady driver? Here. He takes a key ring from his pocket, then looks up before giving it to you. Valori's still here, down past the statue of Philippe. Okay. The cabin is green. You can get in there with these. That's all I know. When did she leave? Last Friday. He blinks, his eyes are empty now. Anything else, like where she is now? And why did you have the keys? I'm sorry, I had to do this. One more thing about something else. Um, why do you have the keys? She left them to me. Because she trusted me. So I can get it out of the way when the jam breaks loose. Otherwise... He doesn't finish the sentence. The other drivers would have to tow it or break in to get the machines moving. He nods. If they break in, they would find what's hidden inside. Something incriminating. Anything else, like where she is now? No. I don't know. Sorry I had to do this. I bet you are. And he's sorry he couldn't be what he wants to be. A good person. His last line? His revenge on the world. I just want to question her. I told you I'm not going to take her in. You don't believe me. That's on you. <laughs> One more thing about something nah, else. Nah, I need to think my own thoughts now. Pray forgiveness for my sins. Go check your cabin. Yeah, I hope fine. it gets you something. Help someone. Alright, 
Alright, let's go. Is it this one? It's green. This green fowl, A to Z, Contemporain, is parked in the shadow of the ruins looming overhead. It's seen better days. This is the one our men pointed to. The lieutenant peeks inside. Try to peek in the window. Try the door handle. Unlock the doors with the key Tommy gave me. Try to peek in the window. The glass on the side windows is tinted and covered with dust. You can barely make out the shape of a seat and two steering levers. Try the door handle. The door is locked. The handle looks shiny, like it's recently replaced. Unlock the door. You push the key into the lock and turn. It makes a cracking sound. Then the door pops back a few centimeters. You can just... The smell of cigarettes and perfume welcomes you. The cabin inside is plastered with old movie posters. Actresses smile from the walls. There's a radio transmitter in the front and a toolbox tucked under the driver's seat. Some tools lie scattered near the pedals. And by the posters, examine the radio, check the pedals. Pull out the pull out toolbox, check the pedals. You wedge yourself under the steering wheel to get a better look. Seems like the few tools lying around here, a hammer, a pair of pliers, a rusty wrench have been casually thrown there by the disorganized driver. But one odd detail does catch your eye. A piece of sandpaper has been glued to the throttle. Sandpaper adds extra grip. Looks like the driver has glued a piece of sandpaper to the throttle to offer some extra grip. Look around the cabin again. Sandpaper? Another technique? Sandpaper would also rub off the pattern from the driver's right boot sole. Yes? He likes where this is going. Do the honours, he thinks. Connect it to yourself. One of the footprints at the crime scene had an aberration. One something smoother than the other. Which means that the missing lady driver was present at the lynching. The lieutenant's light, eyes light up behind his prescription lens. And she's also the one running the drug trade. What a handful! Just <laughs> the drug smuggling, now this. How did just this rabbit hole go? Women, shake your head. Always up to something. <laughs> um, how deep does this rabbit hole go? We've identified one of the footprints, but there are still seven to go. He writes something in his little blue notebook. The movie stars are still smiling from the walls. There's a radio transmitter in the front and a pull-out toolbox tucked under the driver's seat. Some tools lie scattered near the pedals. And by the posters. These are movie posters featuring starlets from long forgotten films from the 20s, the teens, even the 90s of the last century. One of them particularly catches your eye a centerfold of an ingenue attached right above the back seat. Study the centerfold. Enough of the posters. There might be some, there might be some clues. The actress is draped in a sheath dress one of her shoulders bared. The faded remains of an autograph run across the poster. She's looking past the camera. This is Tip Tijon, a starlet from the dawn of cinematography, less known for her talent than her tragic, untimely death. What happened to her? Who cares? She wasted away in a drug den called The Door to the River, not far from here on Boogie Street. A mixture of cocaine and morphine. She was afraid of the world and the camera, too. Enough of the posters. The actresses and the rear actor all smile you a warm goodbye. A radio transmitter is attached to the dashboard and a toolbox sits under the driver's seat. Examine the radio. Looks like the frequency dial is absent. It requires a key to work, but the key has been removed, likely by the missing lady driver. Mm. Strange. There are so many radio stations in here. Must be over 100 at least. Why would anyone need so many radio stations? Is there anything we can do with the radio? What else is here? Why would anyone need so many radio stations? For contacting an entire fleet of lorrymen, for example. Mm. This is all shortwave, UW and UKV. 
Looks like we are dealing with an impressive organizational tool. The nerve center of a huge operation. With quite a range too. Is there anything we can do with the radio? Uh, doesn't look like it. It's completely inoperable without the dial key. What else is here? The smell of a thousand cigarettes. Pull out the pull out the drawer slides out from the seat. It's empty, except for a folded newspaper. Unfold the newspaper. It's an issue of Petty Ferric from last Wednesday. A piece of paper falls out from its pages. It looks like an article ripped out from a radio enthusiast magazine. Complex mathematical equations explain the basics of something called the ULAN frequency system. The ULAN frequency system? I've never heard of that before. I know of FM, AM, UKV, but... His thought trails off. Push in the pull-out toolbox. The pull-out toolbox slides back into its nest. The rest is as it was. Radio, posters, a trace of motor oil smell under all the cigarettes. Close the door. Close the rusty old lorry door. Great. I think we got everything. A word, detective? He steps Before we return to Joyce? He steps away from the lorry. All right, we've finished here. Let's quickly debrief and go over what we found, so we don't do it in front of the company rep. Seems like something police would do. What do you think of all this, Kim? I don't think there's anything to discuss. What do you think of all this? Honestly, I'm quite worried by what we've seen so far. The evidence seems to point to a rather extensive and well-organized operation. I'm especially intrigued by that radio transmitter, particularly the sheer number of stations it can connect. Looks like this alleged drug trade casts a wide net. This means it's well-funded. Technology like that, a major player must be financing it. I'm not sure what the ULAN frequencies are all about, but they may hold some significance. Perhaps it's a better way to connect between fleets while avoiding frequency bleed, or maybe it's used to tap into RCM networks. What about the movie posters? How do they factor into all this? How do you think this is connected to the Union? Will the RCM open an investigation into this? How do you think this is connected? We didn't find anything conclusive linking them to the smuggling operation. But somehow, I doubt that Everard Claire would be oblivious to something like this happening right mm -hmm. under his nose. My suggestion is, we use it against the Union in any way we can, to okay. our own ends. It's a slippery hill, but we just might be able to pin them down, indirectly, down the road. Will the RCM open an investigation? We should return to the murder case. See what Joyce tells us about the lynching. Mm -hmm. When we are done for the day, I call my station and suggest our narcotics department look into it. Okay. There are more than enough grounds to start an official investigation sometime later when we are done here. We do not want to get caught in that. He stops to think. What are you thinking? The fact that one hasn't started already gives me pause. An investigation, mm. I mean. Especially if the Madre grouping is involved, and I can't imagine there aren't. It's certainly worrisome. Corruption? All the same, I don't like the idea of internal affairs descending on the matter. That won't help anyone either. What about the movie posters? As elegant as they are, I don't think they are relevant to the drug trade. A lot of women there, especially for a lady driver's cabin. Maybe the trader is some sort of cinephile. cinephile. Could the film industry be involved? Maybe they like movies. Yes, well... He doesn't say anymore. Unimportant. What about the movie posters? Oh, we were done that. Okay. Okay, debrief over. Debrief over. After you. Okay. Let's go back to Joyce. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? She takes a sip from her silvery thermal cup. I spoke with the lorry man at the roundabout. Yes, my eyes on the harbour have sent word to that effect. What have you discovered? Wait, where exactly are these eyes located? We have discovered enough to conclude for now. Wait, what exactly? Where exactly are these eyes located? It doesn't really matter. And I do apologise for the surveillance. Mm. Wild pines can't afford to be blind at a time like this. One of the tall buildings overlooking the roundabout, most likely. Mm. That would give them a read on the entire quarter. In any case, it's a relief to know someone has looked into it. If I may ask, 
Will there be an official investigation? I assume you discovered there is an operation. The lieutenant is about to interject. Cut him off. This decision should be yours. No, let the lieutenant handle if it. If there is an investigation, it will be part of an ongoing operation, subject to confidentiality. I am sure you understand. Of course, detectives. In any case, you've held up your end of our arrangement. I trust you with the rest. Now it's my turn. Her tone more cautious suddenly. I wouldn't normally break protocol like this, but the situation demands it. If you don't solve this murder, I'm afraid we may have a bloodbath on our hands. What was that about a bloodbath? How are you how are the lynching and the strike connected? I have an indirect role to play, I'm sad to say. My employer experienced a momentary lapse of faith in me. In that moment, they elected to deploy a private military contractor as an insurance measure. They called it my security detail. A momentary lapse of faith? They were dispatched after I relayed the Union's initial offer. Huh. Every worker... A member of the board. I tried mm -hmm. to convince my employer it was simply a piece of rhetoric or a joke. They did not appreciate the humour. Do you need a security detail? Absolutely not. These mercenaries are muscle, pure and simple. They are meant to intimidate the Union into surrendering. Who are they, exactly? Cronel, an Oranese military company. As far as I know, three arrived in Martinez. They report to me sporadically, but they do not answer to me. To be frank, our relationship is deteriorating. They wear ceramic armor, have semi-automatic weapons and years of combat experience. They also have trauma and stressor disorder, and no idea how to conduct themselves in an urban civilian environment. So, what happened? The story is, one of them, the Colonel, I don't know his real name, sexually assaulted a local woman while he was drunk and separated from his unit. This allowed some of the more militant Union members to subdue him. Mm. He was taken out behind the whirling in rags and lynched last Sunday night. So is that where, because cause remember when we were inspecting the body, I think in the last video, um, Harry, our character, uh, deduced or picked up, I don't know how you can pick this up from a dead body, but he picked up on the, the fact that he might have been in pleasure at the time of, the, is that why? Because he was, he was, he did that. What then? Nothing. Mr. Clare refuses to let me into the harbour. I have not been able to discuss this matter with anyone there. The remaining two Cronell contractors carry out their orders. For now. For now? It's a smokescreen. In secret, they are conducting an independent military tribunal into the lynching. Once this investigation is concluded, executions will follow. What is the nature of this so-called investigation? Whether to execute one, some, or all of the Union militants. You've made a mess here. I have to say, this is not disco. Maybe the investigations can team up, you know? Share resources and intelligence. Boy, oh boy, is that not good. Maybe they can team up. Surely you're joking. <laughs> These people are killers. Mm. My only hope is that yours provides a single, concrete suspect before they indiscriminately pick theirs. Simply put, she grabs hold of the main cell. If you don't pin this on someone good and do it fast, they will identify and execute everyone present at the lynching. This in turn will force the Union to respond. They would have to, to project strength yeah. and power. The Debarda have over 2,000 men. It will be a thousand to one. Mm. Have you ever seen a hornet invade a beehive, Lieutenant? She it's back. not pretty. The Serais giant hornet, the world's second largest insect, can kill 40 honeybees a minute, while a group of 30 can decimate an entire hive of 20,000 bees in less than four hours. These men work in tandem using semi and fully automatic firearms. Their armor is virtually mm. impenetrable to muzzle-loaded weapons, even yours. Most Union workers don't have guns at all. As I said, a bloodbath. 
I can't see it happen. Too many things would have to go wrong first. Isn't this a pretty bleak scenario you're describing? I think the confrontation is inevitable. Isn't this a pretty bleak scenario? Many bleak scenarios have already come true. Nameless, badgeless detective of the citizens' militia. All we can do is keep the rest from going the same way. One single concrete suspect delivered into civil court, and I may be able to defuse this situation. What was that about a bloodbath? Yes. I'm afraid this strike may descend into a small-scale civil war, with possible consequences for all of Rivershall West. Since you are sharing, ma'am, this is also the RCM's worst-case scenario. Mm. Then we're on the same page, as grim as it may be. What can you tell me about Cronell? Not much. Their public resume is relatively good, as far as private military contractors go. I believe they were once called Downwell. Mm. They boast a long list of clients. Saint-Baptiste, Welchman Lorenz, Eendracht. A warning sign, however. The operations concerned all take place in third or fourth world countries. Guarding facilities, escort missions and such. Meaning they are used to operating in war zones. Yes. All the good conflict corridors, Supramundi, Yesut, the Seminese Islands, countries that don't have a good record reporting atrocious military conduct on their soil. Okay, anything else you can go on then? You Sadly, on the, no. On them. Before this happened, I had little interest in them. Now that I do, I don't have the resources. She thinks. If you still have access to the ICP's database, you could run a better background check than I ever could. It may take some time, though. Do you know a lot about the inner workings of the RCM and the ICP, ma'am? In my line of work, it pays to do your research. I was prepared to deal with the RCM. I did not think I would be dealing with a group like Cronell. Could you contact the company and tell them to call them off? I have. Mm. And they will. However, these orders take time to reach what is basically a rogue unit out in the field here. Until they do, it's all on us. She's being truthful. She is pressing them as hard as she can. You said the deceased assaulted a woman? Or he didn't. This is information passed on to me from some teenagers loitering around the canal. I cannot testify by it. Who did the passing on who did the passing on then? What did these teenagers but teenagers by the canal say? That the man was killed because he assaulted a local woman. I've asked around a bit. This seems to be the accepted story around Martinez. The lieutenant consults his notebook, his eyebrows knitted in concentration. Oh, we haven't heard any reports about mm. an assault in connection with the lynching. Where did it take place? And when? Last Sunday night, at the Whirling in Rags, the hostel by the gates. Supposedly, the colonel was drunk, maybe on narcotics too. Either way, he's alleged to have sexually assaulted a woman. Sometime later, a group of dock workers got their hands on him. And who was this woman? That's a good question, officer. I don't have the slightest idea. As I said, it's a rumor about a rumor. In any case, it's what the Colonel's remaining colleagues believe. You meet her soon enough, you feel. This Colonel, the one who was hanged, did you know him? If you mean, did I see him alive? Yes. But I did not know him. His name was... Lely. His service name. A nom de guerre, most likely. He wouldn't divulge his full name. Only one of them did. A bad sign if there ever was one. Tell me about the others first. This Lely. Anything else? Nationality? How old would you say he was? Tell me about the others first. One is a man. Corty, they call him. A nickname as well. The other a woman, Phyllis de Paul. Corty is the gunner, I believe. De Paul is a radio operator. Okay. Corty and Phyllis. Corty and Phyllis. Okay. What I would wrote... you say was his eye colour? The deceased. I wrote I wrote all that down. She closes her eyes, trying to picture the man's face. Then shakes her head. 
I can't remember. There's a pang of regret to her voice. The lieutenant was testing her, asking a small detail first to see if she knew him better than she let on. She passed. Mm. That's all right, ma'am. Anything else? Nationality? What would you say was his age? He was 40. Or 50. It's hard to say which. He had a combat injury on his lower jaw. It made it difficult to estimate his age, or gauge his facial expressions. What else? Nationality? Accent? He was, uh, Occidental, I think. Light brown hair, a mixed accent. Oranese. Or Mycenaean, maybe. His injury gave him an accent all his own. In a way, it was humanizing. He had to learn to speak through it. Through the injury. That's all I know, I guess. I only met him once. Where are the remaining two mercs now? They've gone to ground, as it were. I don't recommend seeking them out. For one, they're almost certainly armed to the teeth. They don't have the same respect for the Revachol citizens militia as I do. To put it bluntly, they think you're vigilantes. Ghetto savages. It will not be a fruitful meeting. What do you mean? Okay. Vigilantes. You're a professional officer of the exactly. only legitimate authority in Rivershaw. Yeah. <laughs> Vigilant vigilantes. The RCM gets its authority from the coalition. Where does this come from? Exactly my thoughts. We still need to know where they are. We'll confront them directly. Well, we'll still click. We'll still. We'll steer clear for the moment. Vigilantes. Somehow, I doubt that lecturing them on the legitimate use of force will persuade them to stand down. We still need to know where they are. You're likely to run into them eventually. When that happens, I'll be in a better position to mediate if I don't appear involved. Where are they? These mercenaries. Very high. Scra scab leader murder bad reply. Clothes didn't fit right. Scab leader bad acting didn't pass the background check. Mm, where are they? One is obviously the scab leader at the harbour gates. Oh, okay. The one chanting the idiotic slogans. Mm. He's barely maintaining his disguise. All right. The other has a vantage point in a building south of the roundabout. They were keeping tabs on you while you were canvassing the lorry drivers. Not Minyana, surely. He was asking about the armor. One must be the goon in ill-fitting clo work clothes by the harbor gates, the scab leader. One is probably in the building overlooking the roundabout. I had another question. Ill-fitting clothes. That may be so. Mm. I still hope you heed my advice. There's no need to kick the hornet's nest. For all your talk of averting this catastrophe, the situation at the gate is a border keg. Does this not bother you? Hmm. Of course it bothers me, Lieutenant. But my hands are tied. How would my employer react if it appeared I were intervening on behalf of the Union? Your concern may be appearances. Ours is keeping the peace. One must be the goon in ill-fitting. Oh, I already did that. One is probably in the building overlooking the roundabout. It would afford a good vantage point. In any case, it's practically inaccessible. Where is your radio for contacting them, if I may ask? Do you have an earpiece? Heavens no. I'm not an undercover agent. There's a short wave at the ship's wheel. She nods toward the sloop's cabin. I had another question for you. I hope I can answer it better. How much time do we have? Until the executions start. Truthfully, I don't know. It God. depends on their progress, identifying the members of the lynch mob, and their impatience. They don't report their progress to you? Not on this matter. I'm afraid they consider this a personal initiative. There is a brief silence. Seagulls squawk over the bay. It's a matter of days, not weeks. Oh my God. That's enough for now. I am sorry to have been the bearer of bad news. Mm. If there is anything else I can help you with, please ask. Now, can you tell me about these tattoos? Show her the photo. Of course. Excuse my hesitation before. She reaches over the quad guard wire and takes the photo, holds it in her hand. For about half a minute, 
in silence. It was taken with a trigat not long ago. This is the man's upper body. There were no more markings on his hands or legs. Stay quiet, observe the woman's expression. Her mouth is relaxed. The accordion lines near her mouth vanish. The pearls of her eyes move slowly on the photo's surface. What do you think? Uh, sorry, I was trying to see if I can read the web of interdependencies between these points, the stars. She points to one on the photo paper. I can't, but that's how you read this story. The points themselves don't have letters, numbers, anything. Their size, location on the body and distance from each other tells you what they represent. Like blooms in a pattern, say nothing. Port cities, on the oceans. This is an Oranese map of the waterways, a sailor's tattoo worn by wayfarers of the DeLorean century. As early as 300 years ago, the sailors would mark their bodies to map their travels. What is the use of this map? What travels did the dead man make? Who could tell me more? What, that's all for, what is the use of this map? The sailor's soul would use it to fly back home if they should die abroad. This is a sort of contraption to be reeled back in by. The silver cord, they would call it. Where is he now? This one is going nowhere but the morgue. I've spoken to him, for now the soul is fastened inside his corpse. This one has flown quite far by now. Nowhere, there is no soul. The soul is fastened inside his corpse. That is precisely what the sailors feared when they drew these maps. A fear of drowning within one's own corpse. Who could tell me, oh, what travels did the dead man make? Quite a few. Vredefort, the Oranese capital, traditionally stands on the right shoulder. He started somewhere near here, I think. What next? Then he made his way to the Preto Grangi, through what I think must be the Stutz Canal, an artificial channel through the Occident. From the Preto, he sailed to the Insulindic Ocean, First the Semenese Islands, then this. She points to his heart. What is that? Revachol. Those are the two constants. Redefort on the shoulder and Revachol in the heart. They started the tradition of these maps right after the discovery of Insulinde, at the dawn of the inter age. The old, old world passing by and the new, new world already here. You said you can't read it. I can't. This man was no sailor, and these are no ports. I can understand geographic fragments, but not their meaning. Who could tell me more? His platoon members? The other contractors. Though I do not suggest you go and show them that picture. This man was their friend and comrade. Surely there are other people to ask about the tattoo. Mm. This is not necessary to complete the task, officer. It's a dangerous side task search elsewhere i need the information mark it down ask mercs about tattoos you're right not a good idea leave it off the schedule leave it off the schedule i am relieved you think so i don't think deciphering that tattoo should come before public security That's all for the tattoos. Thank you for your help. Is there anything else I can help you with? Thank you. That's all for now. We have two skill points. Hmm. Look, we're very, we're very weak. Um, I would like to be able to intimidate, you know, like kind of exude some level of, you know, authority i guess uh we can't do this we can't intimidate people with our body you know we can't beat people up so maybe maybe if we put more points in authority maybe we can intimidate them in that way you know um at high levels authority demands respect even if a seat slight could send you into knee breaking mode with low yeah um i'm just gonna do that um Alright, because, yeah, I need to, 
We need to intimidate people in some way, you know? Maybe we should put a point into perception. Or maybe... Or maybe we should unlock another slot. Uh, let's unlock another... Alright. So, what do we want to learn? I hate it how I don't know the benefits, you know? Let's do this. Alright, let's talk to... Let's go to the Whirling Rags and talk to the union employers. Employees. Oh, look. It's the cop who turned me into a bad person. Can we ask him for money now? Care to spare some change? Huh? <laughs> oh. No, I ain't got any money. They don't want to pay for unfinished work. They? Who? The bosses, man. Makes sense. First work, then pay. I don't know who these bosses think they are, but that sounds like a good arrangement for them. So you're broke. Got it. What else did I have to ask here? Makes sense. First work, then pay. Makes sense. It sucks is what it does. Maybe don't tell people. The people they don't like are actually right. Hmm. That's all. I mean, if it's true, it's true. You know what I mean? Like, can we afford any of his clothes? Probably not. First One hand. composure minus hand. shivers. Yep. No, thank you. What about here? Got it. Oh, I don't like your clothes. The stats aren't great. All right. Um, Roy doesn't sell clothes. Uh, I don't think I can get clothes from anywhere else. All right, let's go in, I guess. It's a bowl. There's spit in it. Ew, reeking of tobacco. Yuck. You see hawthorn bushes outside. Hmm. All right. Anything else? All right, let's talk to him. Over here. Over here, she snaps her fingers. What? Oh, it's the gardener, I think. Let me handle this. The woman says to the crowd in the mess hall before turning to you. Detective disorientated. Are you still wondering where you are? This is Martinez, in case you've forgotten. I advise you not to overstay your welcome. Her entire character has shifted. This young woman oh. is cold as ice. You're the gardener. You lied to me. You're not a gardener. I just wanted to know more about the place before I check it out. That's normal. You're the gardener. No, I am not a gardener. I'm a legal counselor for the Dock Workers Union. She crosses her arms. So let's get to it. You're looking for Titus Hardy? You think he has information that will help you? Maybe he does. She points to the man on her right. That's Titus. Talk to him, but know this. I'll be keeping an eye on you. No strong arming, nothing official. The district of Martinez does not recognize your authority to make arrests. It doesn't matter if you recognize our authority. We mm -hmm. will make an arrest if we have to. She says nothing. Her glare speaks for her. What's your role in all this? Like I already told you, I'm a legal counselor. Do you have hearing problems? What if I want to talk to you, not Tardis? What you want is of no significance, officer. Don't test your authority. In Martinez, you are no one. I saw what you were thinking. You want to say, what are you going to do to me? Mm. Don't. Just because it's in your head doesn't mean you have to say it. Okay. You will not lose out on anything good by not saying it. What are you going to do to me? Why are you so aggressive? Aggressive? You make your living enforcing violence. These people are just dock workers. Hmm. So you were spying on us. And now you represent murder suspects. Just dock workers. Hmm. Listen. You moral intern lackeys. You're a mob. Enforcing the unlawful privatization of Revishal. Twenty fat men in the Occident are stealing it all, and you're their bodyguards. Fuck yeah. The tall, broad-shouldered man takes a sip of his beer. 
So ask what you came to ask, or get back to your commanders. The world needs a financial buffer zone. No need to get emotional. The privatization is not unlawful. It's cool and funny. Maybe you're just not historic individuals. I don't know where you heard that, but it's wrong. The RCM is principled and strong, unlike you socialists. I like that. Good start. Let's take it a step further. Armed uprising. What are the union's plans? Yeah, let's do that. Let's ask those questions. I like that. Look, a comedian. Do your job. Ask your questions. Then get out of Martinez. <laughs> Strange. It's as if people don't believe a cop could be a socialist revolutionary. I should talk to Tardis then. This is where you say your bed. A broad-shouldered man points at you with a beer can. Okay. He's used to giving orders and having them obeyed immediately. You should not indulge him. Okay. Detective. The lieutenant acknowledges you with a sharp note. He's leaving it to you. Don't say anything yet. First, we need to talk about your attitude. You need to talk about the man. We need to talk about the man hanged out back. Oh, this is about him. Him. A real looker, that one. That one. <laughs> You're sure taking your time. Waiting for him to get ripe and pretty for you, huh? Oh, he was a real pretty boy by now. Real hot stuff. Letting out that pretty boy smell. Time to go to work in the shit factory! Easy, boys. These janitors have a hell of a job cut out for them. I mean, I wouldn't go in there for a million. He slaps his forehead. You might want to start asking your questions now. It's not going to get better than this. These guys are so macho, they're ready macho. to confess to first degree murder. Ask if it was them. Okay. Do a head count first. Connect these mm. men to the tracks you saw in the yard. Chances are they're going to match. Scan the room. Starting from the right. Boot size, 44. Blonde man, in his 30s. Overbearingly masculine. Sitting on his right. Standard working boots. Size, 45 or 46. Eldest in the room. Probably mid-50s. Smoker. Quiet. Across at the other table. Hot-nailed working boots. Size, 43. Gang tattoos. Mesk mm. or Sarah Maritzian. In his late thirties, early forties. He spent his youth in Villa Labos, a housing project in the Jamrock Quarter. There were incarcerations, hard to say what else. The ink is fading. And then, standard working boot, steel reinforced toes, size 46, the big dick, wide at the shoulders and lean at the hips, rugby cap, fingerless gloves, and numerous scars, a little under 40. The emblem on his vest says Rowan Club. A little patch below it reads T. Hardy, Captain. In the far corner, standard working boot, steel reinforced toes, size 44, 40 something, non alcoholic beverage in hand. You squint. Is that a plectrum? Where? On his neck. Forget it. It's not important. Let's call this one the musician. And the little guy? Size 41. With the light step. Not a child, after all. An mm. older man with a rat face, mean, watery eyes, and two front teeth missing. Mm. In the middle, heaving and wheezing. Big guy. Boot size 46. Pounds? Deep marks. Mm -hmm. Probably carried the victim over. He alone is 130 kilos. Add the man in armor and you could easily exceed 220. Mm -hmm. okay. In conclusion, these seven are the actors on the crime scene. The footprints were theirs, yeah. but there's a discrepancy. One of them is absent, the odd soul. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The missing lady driver yeah. who was running the drug trade. Does it mean the Hardy Boys are involved in the drug trade as well? 
these bandits, definitely. The entire union might be involved, maybe even all of Martinez look around suspiciously. Not necessarily. The lady driver could have kept the drug trade secret. This would fit what Joyce told us, but I don't want to make any assumptions. Yeah. Maybe. But hey, you've stood there for about four seconds, not saying anything. Now is a good time to hit them with questions. Where's the eighth Hardy? The fuck is with you, fella? Titus is staring at you with his head tilted. The man hanged in the backyard. Did you do it? I found eight sets of footprints. Uh, guess what? Uh, yeah, did you do it? The pretty boy. You guys really love talking about that pretty boy. Funny. But my partner and I have a serious matter to discuss with you. Why is there a container belt around the dead man's neck? Why are your boot prints all over the scene? Mm. Yeah, why are your boot prints all over the scene? You mean these boots? He raises his worker boot, size 46, still reinforced toe. Yes. We all got a pair. We wore them the night we took the pretty boy out back and hung him by the neck. Yeah, we did this. He looks you dead together. in the eye. All of us. Until he was dead. That's okay. why our prints are all over the scene. Aha, uh -huh. so you just confess to murder? That's it, the game's over. We got the perpetrator. So you just confess to murder? Goddamn right. I. No. These seven honest men have equally come forth. They told you what happened so that you don't waste any more of your time. All seven together. They're diluting responsibility. It's an anti-arrest tactic. They're playing to their considerable strength in numbers. Don't talk about arresting them. You'll only bring attention to your inability to do so. You murdered him just like that. No remorse. He called the shots that night. Who called the shots that night? When did this hanging incident occur? Why did you kill him? How did you kill him? Why don't I just arrest you? Step closer. Um, you murdered him just like that. No remorse. How many people have you sent to the Shays? Ever felt remorse for them? Shays Electrique is the method of capital mm. punishment in Revachon under the coalition. During the suzerain's reign, it used to be the firing squad. Or send them to reunion to rot. For 20 years. For life. He says it as if it was worse than dying. The reunion? What's that? Yes, but these were all bad people. Criminals. The scum of the earth. Look, I'm just doing my job. That's all. What we do is different. We enforce the law. You just kill people like it's nothing. Honestly, I drink so much I can't really remember anyone I've sent behind bars. Yeah, but these were all bad people. Rest assured, lawman. None worse than our guy. He got what was coming to him. Who called the shots that night? Are you deaf? There will be no singling anyone out. You can't arrest a hardy boy without arresting all hardy boys. Do you think you could do that? Do you think you could arrest them all? A shadow of a smirk passes her lips as she tilts her head. Fuck off, Elizabeth. A trick question. Bitch. Don't let her lead the conversation. Yeah. Titus, keep addressing him. He wants everyone to know he's in charge. Address Elizabeth. No. Address Titus. No, but seriously, who calls the shots around here? <laughs> who do you fucking think does? He sounds more amused than angry. He's so sure it's him. But it's not that simple. There's someone above him, or beside him, sharing the leadership. Hard to say who. Point to Titus. You do. You give the commands. Point to Elizabeth. I thought she did. Point at Fat Angus. That biggest animal. The biggest animal dominates the herd. I'm guessing it's the big one. Bow to the bearded man. Man. Gangs are usually run by the oldest, most venerable member. Point to Elizabeth. I thought she did. It wasn't a question, dickwad. How fucking stupid are you? This asshole is worse than... Titus runs the Hardy Boys, genius. That's why we're called the Hardy Boys. Ain't that right, fellas? I think you got your answer. 
Mr. Law. I thought I wanted to point to her because I wanted them to get angry and thus weaken her power over them, you know? Um, I wanted to rile them up so they can... Yeah. Yes, there are some administrative differences. But on that night, they all acted as one man. When did this hanging incident occur? Why did you kill him? Why? Because he was worthless mercenary scum. And he stepped out alive in my town. So he was a mercenary, that's it? Glad we cleared that up. So he was a mercenary, that's it? And he stepped out alive. He repeats, jaw clamped shut like a vice. What kind of mercenary? The kind that shows up when you start a strike. The experienced kind, too. Had Kohoi and Semenine written all over him. ex oranese special forces. A live grenade, right here in our bar. This one has a special gripe with him coming here. Mm. I can't prove it, but I know he was sent by the Wild Pines. Yeah. They hire merc shit like that. Story of every strike from here to Samara. Hold on, how do you even know he was in Special Forces? Right, but what did he actually do wrong? Wrong? He harassed women, raped one, harassed workers, threatened to kill some as a warning. He wiped spittle from his mouth. Ew. From rape, to harassment, to threats of violence. Why the strange de-escalation? Hmm. He regrets mentioning it. Hopes you didn't notice. <laughs> to kill us all, if we don't open the gates, if we don't let the scabs in, if we don't bend over. And that was before he started coming here. Yeah, he said it was his favorite joint now. Started to come in here every night. Drinking, grabbing girls, grab one of ours mid-karaoke, right there on the stage. He grabbed someone? The lieutenant is trying to make sense of this flood of information. Yeah, this girl's on the mic, a beautiful girl, young. Gets into the second verse of Lover Lake, the fucker grabs her legs, starts screaming. Show me your cunt, why don't you show me your cunt? Then, he gets knocked on the head with a wine bottle, doesn't even fall down. <laughs> yeah, he shakes his head in disbelief. What was, what? Was this the same girl who was sexually assaulted, raped, you said? Okay then, now about the man you killed. Yeah, was this the same girl? Aren't you fucking listening? My man is talking to you. He took care of it. They got the girl out before anything else could happen. Yeah, me and Eugene got her out. Aren't you fucking listening? There's something odd here. Yeah, no shit. Seems like they don't want to talk about that rape Titus yeah. mentioned. Why not? This is a serious allegation. Make them talk about it. Right, but who did he rape then? This is a very serious allegation. No, you're not getting the name. That's a Martinez matter. And I'm not discussing it with you clowns. When did this hanging incident occur? You don't have to keep answering his questions. The fixer returns to remind Titus. I know, Lizzie. Relax. We killed him last Sunday night. Seemed like a good way to end the week. How long had you known the victim? Known him? We don't associate with scum like that, asshole. Yeah! Who do you think we are? Quiet. He came around about three weeks ago when that Pines cow first sailed into town. Happy? By the Pines cow, you mean Joyce Messier? The Is representative it? for White Pines? The same company you are striking against? No. I mean the Pines cow. The stupid ass cow they sent in to fuck us over. But you know what? He rubs his chin, pretending to mull it over. This is where he tries to sow discord between you two. Because he knows the company is responsible for bringing the mercenaries into town. Why don't you ask her about the pretty boy? I'm sure she has interesting things to say when you ask her hard enough. That's enough insinuation for today, Titus. Officer, your interview is drawing to an end. 
Don't waste your last questions. How did you kill him? We hanged him up by his neck until he got real still. Wasn't that obvious, copper? Didn't they teach you anything at the cop school, idiot? You're pretty sure you've had at least two years of cop school and many more of active service. This is where an autopsy would come in handy. You have to work with what you know. We need more. Did you muffle him? We haven't heard any reports of screams. Titus, you don't have to clarify anything. We overpowered him. Dragged his unconscious body to the tree. Put a noose around his neck. So he was unconscious. He was dead and steady. Okay. Then we left him for seagulls, maggots, and you fucks. Make them a bit more uncomfortable first. Then see if it all adds up. Wasn't he a trained killer from RNG's special forces? If yes, then how did you manage to overpower him? Where did this overpowering ha happen? Red check. Hmm. How did you manage to overpower him? With numbers, asshole. How do you think? You're right, Lizzie. I've done enough explaining here. No, he hasn't. Not yet. Where did this overpowering happen? Weren't you fucking listening? The fucker came to our bar. It happened right here. This one has a distinct style. Mm. He puts so much whiny emotion into everything he says, <laughs> it's hard to see if he's lying. But he could be. Titus lets the others clear out the details, so he doesn't get his hands muddy with explaining too much. Uh, ooh. Alright. Oh, shit. Um, things aren't quite right. Are we gonna fail? Titus yeah. is solid as a rock, and so are a few others. But first, tell me who's solid to who's cracking under the pressure. <laughs> this one, he's sweating profusely and has difficulty breathing. They've smartly kept him out of the conversation thus far. Definitely the weakest link in the chain. <laughs> hey, you turn to the big guy. You having trouble breathing over there? No. He looks up, startled, his forehead shiny from sweat. A few coiled locks are peeking out from under his warm woolen hat. Of course he's having trouble breathing. Just look at how fucking fat he is. <laughs> the, man, the man next to the big guy bursts out laughing. Fuck off, Shanky. Angus is a powerful guy. All muscle. Keep your eye on this powerful guy. Sooner or later, he's going to break like a piece of mm. twig. There's something you're not telling me. And fuck you too, copper. Picking on Angus like this. this. We're done with this schoolyard shit. And just so you know, he doesn't have trouble breathing. His all muscle mm. comment wasn't sarcastic. He's genuinely trying to look out for Angus. This one is a stone wall. You won't get more out of them about the night of the murder. Not yet. Right, I have other questions about the lynching. Like what, copper? So, what are you? What are we going to do now? Conclude the questioning. Should I do this? I don't think I should. So, what are we going to do now? Nothing. Your investigation here is done. Leave Martinez, go back to your stations where you belong. I think we're going to stick around, thanks. Some things don't add up here, Titus. The lieutenant closes his notebook. I've done this job for long enough to know that people don't just confess to first degree murder. Even if it is a group responsibility, we're going to look into this. Good luck with that. You've heard everything a rent-a-cop is gonna hear from us. Real law officials you're lucky you didn't get a beaten rent a cop so that's what this is about he doesn't see you as his equals hmm fuck weak when you first met shit i 
found the eight sense of footprints, but there's only seven of you. Where is the eighth hardy boy? What are you talking about, madman? There's no eighth hardy boy. There's seven of us and we're all here. He sizes you up. Or what? You want to be the eighth hardy boy? We ain't hiring. He shakes his head. Actually, boss, we've been talking and we think she could maybe... Share. This person Glenn wants to hire, he really respects her. Shut the fuck up, Glenn! I do the talking here. Now what the fuck do you want, cop? It has to be good if he won't let you pursue it. Looks like the lieutenant thinks so too. So let me get this straight. There is an ace hardy boy. It's a she, and you don't like us talking about her? That's right. We're not talking about this. This is a private hardy boys matter. Nothing to do with your shit. And he points at the lieutenant. You're not cops here. Don't go digging around if you don't want a bullet in the back of your head. I'm watching you. Good. We are all watching each other. Officer, your question. There's no point in pushing it further, he thinks. This is already a victory. We'll learn more about this eighth hardy sooner or later. Uh, guess what? I've connected you to the local drug trade. Like hell, you have. There is no local drug trade. This place is as clean as a rifle. Go back to Jamrock and ask the local junkies how clean your streets are in Precinct 41 Kilos. We'll do that. In the meantime, did you know that there's an abandoned lorry at the intersection that was used to move raw ingredients for drugs from Terminal B to Jamrock? The person driving it was present at the hanging. It was one of you. We've connected the footprint. Detective, do you want to deliver the coup de grace? No, the thunder is his. Leave it to the lieutenant. No, do the honor. You've earned it. Not a little tenant. Forget it. I knew they'd never give up. To... Mm. You're right. There is no local drug trade. Except you. No, do the honor. You've earned it. Thank you. You're right, Titus. There is no local drug trade because it's all controlled by you. You're the drug trade. That's a mighty interesting theory. I guess that's what you would need to do, theoretically. A big, strong, state-run monopoly would outcompete the runs on the street. Yeah, man. Theoretically, that's what you would do. To get rid of the gangs, the dealers, even some of the junkies. You would need good, trustworthy people to take their place, of course. Hardy men to run such a monopoly. For the good of the community, of course. Yes. But that just sends everyone else to Jamrock, doesn't it? You've just diverted the flow to Jamrock. You've made it our problem. This is disgusting. You're admitting to profiting off of poisoning your own people. Good idea. People are always going to do drugs. At least this way you have some control over it. Yeah, keep telling yourself that. I know for a fact there's still plenty of drugs out there. You've just diverted flow to Jamrock. You've made it our problem. We haven't done anything. But theoretically, it has to be someone's problem. So it might as well be yours. He takes a sip of his beer and smiles. Titus, I'm amazed. Where is the same professionalism when it comes to other topics? You're doing great. I hardly have to interfere at all. Shut up, Elizabeth. I don't know, Lizzie. I guess theoretical things don't make me emotional. Now, was there anything else? I was sorta of gonna get my brewski on. Not quite yet, Mr. Hardy. There were eight sets of prints on the crime scene. There are only seven Hardy boys here. The eighth Hardy, the one who's missing, she runs the thing, right? My answer is, fuck off. He takes a step Mind closer. your own business. There is no eighth Hardy. I run this goddamn scene. Finally, you got something out of mm. him. This could prove useful in the future. And here we go. Back to the usual. The woman says. I know, I know. 
fat he walked on all fours. He's so fucking fat he left two sets of footprints. <laughs> Go fuck your mom, Dennis. That's more like it, boys. You heard him. It was Angus on all fours. Anything else you need to know? I talked to Joyce, the merc you, hang, you hanged. His friends are coming for you. Yeah. My friends. You mean his squad mates from Cronell. Wouldn't want a peat of his grandma. They're snickering in the room. Some of the men put their beards down. Yes, they are forming some kind of tribunal and they're coming for you. Forget I mentioned it. It was probably nothing. Yeah, they're coming for you. This is what happens if you take the law into your own hands. Other people start doing it too. Let them come. The Hardy boys are right fucking here. Blondie yells across the cafeteria. You heard the man. Right here. We're armed. We got the whole district behind us. And Glenn. Glenn is fucking crazy. Yeah. I will oil it, murder machine. He punches Blondie on the shoulder. Do you know that a single Serae's giant hornet can kill 40 bees a minute? This Cronel is bad news, you know that, right? The mercenaries are armed with automatic weapons. Joyce said they've gone rogue, nobody's controlling them. The, the, this Cronel is bad news, you know that, right? <laughs> so are the local gangs, the fucking Barmy army, and the Madre scum. You've been out there. Seen any around? Yeah. What are they now, huh? Send back to Madre in an airtight cargo crate. These people are trained military professionals with decades of combat experience. They are not a gang or a barmy army. No, they're not. They're uncoordinated and drunk. We know more about them than you think. The mercenaries are armed with automatic weapons. We got weapons of our own. We got Easter 50s, Zilagars. Glenn's got a knock cannon at home. Will they pierce ceramic armor? I guess we're gonna see, aren't we? That was an unsure phrasing. Mm. See what? That they don't? Yeah, like you've been up against ceramic armor. He takes a sip of beer to bide his time, then tries to get the last word in. You haven't even seen the whole suit, right? I've seen the whole fucking thing, and it didn't make him immortal. Do you know that a single <laughs> hornet can kill 40 bees a minute? The fuck is that <laughs> supposed to mean? You're the bees, they're the hornet. We're not bees, we're men. We're socialists. Easy, easy. He's trying to phase you. What are you trying to do? Scare my men? Joyce said they've gone broke. Nobody's controlling them. Big fucking surprise. They hire psycho scum, arm them to the teeth, and let them loose in the city. What do you think is gonna happen? Okay. Conclude with a shrug. Okay. What do you mean, okay? He jerks forward a bit. I mean, okay, they're going to wipe you the fuck out, Titus. I mean, okay, you got this, you got the numbers. I mean, okay, I'll be on your side when they come. I mean, okay, you got one more gun on your side. Once I find mine, I lost it. <laughs> I mean, okay, I guess I'll be gunning you down right alongside them. I mean, okay, they're going to wipe you the fuck out, Titus. No, they won't. Get out of here with your negative energy. <laughs> your negative energy. <laughs> he really doesn't like you ruffling their feathers like that on what might be the eve of battle. All he means is that the situation is serious. Mm. No wonder you cops get shot to shit every day. Can't go to war with an attitude like that. Oh, yes, authority. Establish authority. One, confronted about drug trade. One, discussed Eighth Hardy. Two, warned about the tribunal. Yes, authority. As you yes. look around this room full of sweaty men, swearing, drinking, spitting out tobacco, does this look familiar? Where have I seen this before? I get it, Titus. You guys really are the authority around here. Huh? 
You must be. You're just like real cops, drinking beer and sitting around with your dicks in your hand. You got a problem with beer now? Not quite there yet. Push on. No, no, I'm drunk on the job too. I don't give a shit, just like you guys. No, I'm also a big fan of beer and jerking off instead of helping people. I have a beer problem, but not a problem with beer. I also have no idea how to do my job like you. Yeah. Speak for yourself, buddy. I've been running this outfit for 10 years now. You should have seen Martinez before it started. It was like jam rock now. They didn't see shit, man. Kids getting shot. We had three shootings a week. Fucking graffiti everywhere. You cops haven't shown up since the 30s. Congratulations on the graffiti removal. <laughs> All I see is you sitting around talking about Monica's titties while there's a rape victim. So what? What do you want from me? We took care of that fuck. He picks the beer back up. Don't let him drink that. One more push. Quick. Just okay. don't antagonize him. You have this already. Alright. It's not about who did it. It's about the victim. She needs help. Someone's been raped. She needs counseling. We need to talk to her. I've asked this before. Why are you hiding the victim? Hmm. It's not about who did who did it. She needs help. Titus. He looks at her. She stops mid sentence. That's it. You got him. He's going to give it up, but on his terms. Okay. You wanna help her, cop? Fine. I'm gonna let you help her, but you treat her with respect. Of course. If you don't, if you question her, harass her. A freight train of pain, buddy. What is her name? The lieutenant takes out his notes. Glacia, I'm on you. She's staying here in the whirling in rags. It's her! A pretty one. Silvery jumpsuit. Blonde. That's I'm on you. With an O. U. So it's probably a good thing that I we didn't try to proposition her, you know? Shit. The girl. The girl upstairs? Mm hmm That can't be her. She knows you drank so hard you forgot you were a cop. Oh, it's her! It's definitely her! It's Miss Oranje Disco Dancer! C classy correct your tie. Miss Oranje Disco Dancer? Composure. No, I can't do that. Um, Disco Dancer. Sure. Why not? You've probably seen her around. He nods upstairs. What? Oh my god. Cool. Keep your cool. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> you inexplicably add cool after the victim's name. Cool, With your cool. eyes bulging <laughs> like some wild beast. Your fingers are fidgeting oh and sweat god. starts forming on your brow as Titus looks at you oddly. Oh my god, keep your cool. Fucking I don't out. understand what's so cool here. Nothing. We he just have a, a few more questions. Then we'll be on our way. He gives you a sideways glance. Whatever you do, do not tell him you know her. Okay. That would sound off. Alright. Calm. Normal. Try to forget this little hiccup. Uh, so what was her relationship with the mercenary? So the um the rape when was that? So scratch your head. What is your relationship with her? I think I, <laughs> I think I know her. <laughs> Thank you. We'll talk to her. Conclude. Um. You know what? Let's not. Thank you. Remember what I said. Freight train of pain. He points his beer can at you. All right. I'm going to take off now. Cool. I think that went well. Bye, Elizabeth. Bye, Lizzie. All right, Kim. Officer, what was that? What? What was what? It was nothing. You mean the sweating and the fidgeting when he mentioned her name? Yes. 
and the sort of quivering jello thing with the eye, point to your twitching eye. I think I know that woman. The victim? Is there something I should know before we talk to her? Whatever you do, don't say the first thing. I didn't rape her. <laughs> I met her in the hallway after I woke up. She knows I didn't remember being a cop. I met her in the hallway after I woke up. Understood. You were not in good shape on Monday. No, I wasn't. She knows I didn't remember being a cop. Okay, that's manageable. That's it. Why would I say that? Should I say it? Just, you know, like when there's a dialogue option in a game, you want to say it, you know? No, that's it. This that's is it. unprofessional. Not sharing information with me is unprofessional. What do you mean? His opinion of you has lowered considerably. Yes? Okay. Should I, should I tell you every single person I've ever spoke to, Kim? Like, what the fuck? Uh, alright, um, how much longer do we have on this? It doesn't say. Alright, um, having that authority is really good. Um, I, I feel like we should put something in perception, but I don't want to, you know? Like, I want to put it into something more fun, like suggestion or authority. You know what? Let's go authority again, you know, because we we need that. We Because we're, we don't have the, our physical. We can't intimidate physically. We need to intimidate authoritatively, you know? All right, so we should just go speak to her now, then. The door is closed. Knock. Who is it? A woman's voice answers, muffled by the door. Tired. Controlled. This is the police. Can we come in? Come on up. The door is open. She shouts. I'm drying my hair. Alright. Kingdom okay. of Conscience. The Kingdom of Conscience will be exactly as it is now. Moralists don't really have beliefs. Sometimes they stumble on one, like on a child's toy left on the carpet. The toy must be put away immediately, and the child reprimanded. Centrism is a change, not even incremental change. It is control over yourself and the world. Exercise it. Look up at the sky, at the dark shapes of the coalition airships hanging there. Ask yourself. Is there something sinister in moralism? And then answer, no. God is in his heaven. Everything is normal on earth. Learning cap of volition raised to five. Learning cap. Moralist dialogue options heal one morale. Okay. Hotel bill calculations look like she's had Looks like she's had an extensive stay. God, yours is so much nicer than mine. Piles of dirty clothes. A woman's. Where is she? Is she up? We'll go through the door. This medicine cabinet is full of wares. Sheets of pills haphazardly stacked one on top of the other. There's also a toothbrush somewhere in there. Look at the toothbrush. Look at the medications. It's been used quite a lot. Look at the medications. Pharmaceuticals line the shelves. Sheet upon sheet of pill bottle next to pill bottle. Acetylic acid, APAP, eye drops, blood thinners. There's quite a collection in here. Search the bottles. There's quite a collection in here. Anything of not? He asks in a lowered voice. Search the bottles. Pill bottles rattle like bones as you search the cabinet. Paracetamol. Histoperidol. Something in a foreign language you can't read. Behind them, an unusually shaped nasal spray. Its label reads, Necra. Necra? This is used to treat opioid overdoses. Always handy to have around. Whisper. Necra 
opioid antagonist. Keep it to yourself. Whisper. Interesting. That's used for diamorphine overdoses. The lieutenant nods, then lock, looks at the door. Search the pill sheet. Among some foreign, probably Messinian or Godvaldian, marked red blister packs you find. What do you find? This is going to take a little know-how. Yes. Medium. Is there something more interesting here? A bright orange bottle with preptide stamped on it. In sunny, happy letters. Jackpot, baby. That's the stuff you're looking for. Your palms begin to sweat just holding that little plastic container. What's so exciting about this orange bottle? Lieutenant, I also see a brand called Preptide. Interface soon. Lieutenant. Preptide. A Preptide. euphemism for pharmaceutical amphetamine. Prescription speed. The fuck are you waiting for? Let's get super fucking preppy. What's so exciting about this orange bottle? It's speed, man. Just what you were looking for. They call it dextroamphetamine and talk about psychological disorders. But what we're seeing here is some scientifically advanced trucker speed. Told Kim about it. <laughs> just take it in, just take it in plain sight. The lieutenant looks toward the door as if he didn't see you pilfer that sweet prep time. I, what do you mean? I didn't want to take it. Who cares, man? Who cares what the stiff thinks? I thought he meant Here take it in, like... Just put it in your sweaty little hand now. Close the cup. I didn't want to take it. I didn't want to take it. I wanted to take... I thought it was just take it in, you know? How we were in Frite and we saw all the alcohol and the drugs and there was an option to buy it or just to take it in. You know, just acknowledge them, acknowledge... Them. That's what I thought. I didn't want to take it. Fuck. In the yard below, a corpse hangs from the pine tree. Okay. Great. I'm trying to win Kim back. You know, can I please get through the door? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No, open. No, open. Yes? No, nothing. Oh, my God. Yes. Come on, let's go, please. Thank you. Woo! The bed has been hastily made. No. <laughs> hey. The smell of cigarette smoke in the air. Astra menthol. Okay. Cold coffee and an ashtray that looks like a hedgehog. <laughs> Welcome to the roof. The young woman has a cigarette in one hand and a cup of coffee in the other. Below her silvery jumpsuit, an athletic young body, built long and lean. Oh my god. I'm sorry for the mess down there. The cleaning lady hasn't come by in days. Why? I'm beginning to wonder if she ever will. Nice view you've got here. Is there a cleaning lady? I think I need one. Proceed politely. No time for pleasantries. I think I need one. Oh, yes. Legends of room number one have made their way around the building. They say a portal to hell has opened in there. It has. Disco infer infernum hell, you know not of which you speak. There are vortices of dark energy present, but not to hell, to another place, a third place, much different from our world. No, I just trash the place. It has. They also say it's where the cleaning lady quit. Oh my god. I am Kim Kitsuragi. I am a detective from Precinct 57. I see you've already met my colleague. Have I ever? She Have you grown to... accustomed to your role as a police officer? Oh yeah. Feel the power. I have grown accustomed to the power, miss. <laughs> Once a cop, always a cop. I have very little idea of what I'm doing. <laughs> that is unimportant to the case at hand. 
once a cop, always a cop. Like riding a copper cycle. She takes a sip of her coffee. I could go for a coffee, actually. Miss, we are investigating the murder of the man who was hanged. The people responsible have asked us to talk to you. Ah, oh, I see. She takes a pensive drag of her menthol cigarette. Be careful. Ask something else first. When you go there, use words like, I hear you have been through something okay. difficult. Mm -hmm. What is your name, miss, for the record? I already know her name. Nice room you've got here. They tell us you've been through something difficult. I noticed your room is close to mine. I have a personal question. All right. Uh, nice room you've got here. Yeah. It's pretty deluxe. <laughs> What are you doing here in the whirling rags? I'm wintering. How long have you been staying here? About four months. I came in November. Why here? Here in the whirling, here in Martinez, or here in Ravishol? Here in Martinez. I heard this is where the washed up disco has been go. Hmm. You came to the right place. You're too young to call yourself a disco has been. No, this is sassy town. It's where the future of dance lies. Understood. You came to the right place. She looks at you and nods. What are you doing here in the whirling and rags? You have quite the collection of prescription drugs down there. Oh my god. Thank you. I've put a lot of time and effort into it. She says without any discernible irony. Technically, possession of narcotics is legal in Rivershon, but you should still reprimand her. No. No, no. Don't listen to the stiff. No. Be cool. Necromania is nothing to be proud of, miss. It was quite impressive. How did you amass such a hoard? With money, sir. It's not exactly the anti-star size caboodle I intend for it to be one day, but it's getting there. The anti-star is, or was, a Vespertine rock and roll star who liked to do drugs. He did so many drugs, he eventually mutated into a corpse. The collection includes Nacra, an o opioid antagonist. You seem to have, among other things, Preptide. That's all as far as it goes. That's all as far. The collection includes Nacra. Comes in handy when you've done too many opioids. Is that something that happens to you often, miss? His tone isn't aggressive, just inquisitive. Better safe than sorry. She takes a drag and smiles. I want to give her her pills back. That's what I want to do. You seem to have, among other things, Preptide. Oh, yes. One of my favorites. It cures many ailments. Like what? Like not being able to stay up for 36 hours. Not being happy. It cures those ailments. It's just a merit speed molecule, basically. Cool, I took some for personal use. Show her the prep tide. Uh. Huh? Motherfucker took my prep tide? Looks like you owe me one, officer. I'm talking serious corruption here. This does not amount to actual corruption. I can easily log it under confiscation. Robbed so, so, so. by common highwaymen. It's hard to tell if she means it in earnest or as a joke. I want to give them back to her. Oh, my God. I have other questions for you. Okay. Okay. They tell us you've been through something difficult. Something difficult? She raises her eyebrows. I've been through at least half a dozen difficult things. Which one do you mean? Were you sexually assaulted, miss? Have you been raped? Forget about it. Have, were you sexually assaulted? By sexually assaulted, you mean raped? She takes a quick drag, unperturbed. Yes. It's a bit early in the morning for raped, isn't it? It's not early in the morning. She sounds positively buoyant, vivacious, totally unbothered. Yes, exactly. Actually, it's evening, miss. Is it? Squinting, she takes a look around. The sun sets in the sea. Long shadows pass over the plaza below. It is evening. Time flies, man. So were you? Yeah. I'm going to go with not raped. 
I don't want to say that shit about him. By him, she must mean the victim. Mm. Tell them it's not my style. They'll have to, you know, if they want to jazz up the charges, they'll have to get someone more, uh, rapable. It's all very organic. Her mannerisms, her movements. If she's acting, she's quite gifted. By they, she means the Hardy Boys. Are you saying that you were asked to tell us you were assaulted? Not explicitly, but I understood what they meant. It wouldn't hurt to spice things up a bit. Some assault and battery. Sexual assault, maybe. It was clear the latter would be spicier. Titus asked you to spice things up for us. Are you sure you weren't <laughs> What did happen between you and the victim? What can you tell me about him? Name, eyes, age. What did they hang him for, if not rape? How did the Hardy Boys know you? Titus asked you to spice things up for us. Pretty much. She cradles her coffee cup in both hands. Warming them. Are you sure you weren't? <laughs> what did happen between you and the victim? We partied. You mean like a birthday party? <laughs> What kind of partying? Point to your bloated face. The kind I do. <laughs> I don't get it. What do you mean partied? Yeah. With all due respect, sir, I think we partied a little harder than that. No one parties harder than me. Harder than this? Keep pointing to your face. I didn't know it was physically possible. Oh, it is. You're still alive. So are you. What did you do when you... Parted. We drank, sir. A lot. For weeks, basically. We had that effect on each other. Okay. We made each other drink harder. That's why I liked him. What mm. else? Stimulants. Speed also has that effect, making you drink harder. And then drinking harder makes you do more speed. It's quite the combination. We also had sex. You were lovers? Were feelings involved? A little. The drugs were good enough, and we did enough of them. How did you two meet? The lieutenant's voice is quiet, calm. Downstairs, at the bar. He was on some sort of assignment. Uh, a military man, as you probably know. Had a cool, scary scar. She appears aloof, but that scar part, the scary, is stressed and drawn out. What's that about? Apprehension? With longing. She misses him. Mm. When was this? A month ago? Something like that. It must be hard for you, point to the yard, seeing him there all the time. Oh yes. I have multiple viewpoints. From the roof, out of the bathroom window, in my dreams. You called us, the RCM. Yes. Mm. Jackpot. The core reporting, the hanging, that was you? I made it. And I would appreciate it if you didn't tell everyone. Okay. In Martinez, they call it snitching. Okay. Reporting crimes is confidential in Revachol, miss. Before we go on, if it's snitching, then why did you do it? The caller's voice was just, why did you do it? Because I couldn't handle it anymore. None of these people called. Mm. He just kept hanging there. Then they started stripping him. The caller's voice was disguised. I didn't exactly disguise it. I just muffled the mic and nicked the landline a little. Nicked it? How? With nail clippers. And I diverted some radio fuzz into it. Into the cold wire. So that's why the phone is out of order. She tampered with the whirling landline. Mm. And in the process, you broke the landline downstairs. Did I? Fuck. I didn't mean to. I had no idea what I was doing. She looks into her coffee. Jigsaw falling into place. Phew. This is satisfying. Good catch. I appreciate the symmetry. Why go through all that? Why go through all the trouble? I don't know, sir. It was stupid. I was drunk, too. I was probably afraid the union was listening in. Mm. Locals say they have ears in the wires. We're not entirely convinced about that answer. 
But okay, let it slide. Pushing won't help here. Thank you for making the call, miss. It was the right thing to do. I didn't want to, sir. And he's still hanging there. He looks away. We will move the body to the morgue today, miss. Don't worry. Will we? It's nearly the end of our shift. What can you tell me about him? Name, eyes, age? I'm sorry, I can't do it. Not right now. Later, maybe. I keep seeing him. Like he is now. I can't talk about his... I don't know. Hair? Another puff, more nervous. I know it's difficult, miss. We can return to it later. She meant she sees him in her dreams. I've also seen him in a dream. So nothing. You pissed it all away. All of it. Elysium. I don't want to ask her that. What did they hang him for, if not rape? He had something to do with the strike. One has been roiling since I got here. Rotten timing. But you probably know all about it. And his role in this strike was... what? I think he was in a security detail. He was ex-military. Worked for Wild Pines. And against the Union. We didn't discuss work much, if you know what I mean. But I understood it was dangerous. And they lynched him for it? She nods. How did the Hardy Boys know you? How do the Hardy Boys know you? They're frequent guests. Downstairs. They have a booth for union members. They're probably down there now. And how did you meet? Over drinks. It's been a long, boring winter. Did you party? A little, yeah. Like you partied with the deceased? No, not as hard. I'm sorry to have to ask this, but have you had a physical relationship with any of the Hardy Boys? I have. Which one? Which ones, sir? I don't remember precisely. Titus, obviously. But as I said, it's been a long winter. Could that have been part of the reason they hanged him? Mm. Could that be why they lynched him? Jealousy? I hope not. Actually, I know that's not the reason. I'm careful about that kind of thing. Not crossing the wires, you know? But that's probably where they got the rape idea. Well, apparently not. If you got with more than one of them, I mean, that's kind of crossing wires, you know? What do you mean? Men like that? I don't know. It's the way their imaginations work. I suspect it's what they'd like to do to me. Fine, I'll do it. Are you sure you weren't raped? I'm 89% sure. 89. So you're not entirely sure? Does that mean you're 11% not sure? Got it. 89% is good enough. <laughs> so you're not entirely sure. You know how it is. Do you? Do I? Hmm. Maybe you don't. The ash lands on her jumpsuit, she brushes it off. In conclusion, officer, I'm gonna go with a mild to medium not raped here. Okay then, no one deserves to be raped. Sexual assault is a serious matter. I need a serious statement from you. It sounds like something happened and you don't want to acknowledge it. Lieutenant, I don't know what to say about this. No one deserves to be raped. I'm sure there is one person in the world who does. I mean... There are so many people, but let me make this clear. The man in that tree did not rape me. Okay. The wording, the verbal eye roll. She's almost disgusted with the platitude you served up. Thank you for telling us all of this, miss. She breathes a silvery sigh of relief and weariness. The air on the roof feels humid should we head by downstairs officer we may have things to discuss there you want to yell at me some more kim as he says so you feel the young woman looking at you and get a feeling you can't quite put your finger on a suspicion 
I had something else before we go. A little thing. She nods. Silvery cigarette fumes disappear into her mouth. What is your name, miss, for the record? Clasier Amondu. Clasier. Same name that Titus gave you. It sounds Oranese, as does her accent. Are you from Orani? Right, sir. Vredefort. Republic of Oranie. Oranie. I guess you could say I am an Oranese expatriate. Oranese. What is Orane? A bad memory, officer. Bad memory of what? Of lilacs and lightning. Parks, glass. Duraluminium. Vredefort is a conference city. It's always autumn there. A night. At least it was for me. What's so bad about that? Nothing. If you're no longer there. How old are you? I'm 28. I knew it! I knew it! I was gonna say, I reckon she's 28. Maybe we knew that. Maybe we knew that already. Um, what do you do, miss? What is your specialization? Something stupid. What's that? Oranese lit. Oranese lit. Oranese lit? Oranese literature. It's what I studied at the university. She raises both eyebrows. What is Oranese literature about? Fear of failure, fear of death, how it sucks to be Oranese. Oranese? All national literatures are... Only the name of the nation changes. What about Revisholian literature? People sometimes reveal things about themselves when they discuss such matters. Revolsholian <laughs> literature too? No. No. Revisholian lit is about how magnificent and serious Revishol is. It's about how you have to save the world. I have no intention of doing that. I do feel the urge to save the world, yes. I guess that's why I'm on this case. The world is unimportant. I want to hear about you. Oh my god, relax. Um... I do feel the urge to save the world. That's the natural state of the Revisholian hero. She breathes in the menthol, flavoured fumes savouring it, then breathes out. RNA is lit. What do you do with it? Nothing. I do nothing with it. How do you make money then? Money is very important. Show her some money. Cool. It's not very cool, but what can you do? Could we take a look at your passport, please? I'm afraid you can't, officer. Why is that? Because it's buried in a sealed plastic bag at an undisclosed location on the coast, along with cash and airline tickets. Thank you for your candor. Why? They say so in your tourist brochure. Keep travel documents away from your person when west of the river. I'm pretty sure I have the legal right to demand your passport, miss. How do I know you've told us your real name? Okay, then. Okie dokie. She pours herself more coffee. Thank you, that's it for the record. The record? So official. I need to talk to you about your room again. Yeah? I have other questions. All right. Let's talk more about the so-called assault. Not my favorite topic, but okay. okay. We've, um, done all of this. Thank you. How about you. we, you know, change the subject to something more lighthearted now? I notice your room is close to mine. I have a personal question. Yes. You're just one room away. She pours Very herself personal. more coffee. Good. Yes. This means she could have heard something. Like what mm -hmm. you were doing before you blacked out. Were you in Sunday night? I need to know what I did before I lost my memory. You do not need to know that. What you need is to ask normal police questions. Like... Oops. He waits for you to finish the sentence. Get a grip, he thinks. At least do your personal stuff when I'm not here. Ugh. Whatever, Kim. Let's turn to this later. Let's return to this later, miss. Why not? I'll be here until 11 p.m. Drinking coffee, most likely. All right, I'll come back then. All right. Kim. You're pissing me off. All right, let's leave. Let's go Looks out. like we have more to discuss with those so-called 
Hardy Boys. Half their reasoning just went out the window. You think this will make them cooperate? Nothing will make them respect the RCM. But it will disrupt the game they prepared for us. Mm. We just tripped off one layer of whatever it is. Her decision to not corroborate their story was definitely not part of the plan. Say in a hushed voice. Why did she tell us all of that? Got it, let's go. What yeah. else could she have done? Lie? She saw there was no way to lie and get away with it. You would have caught it. Nod, I would have caught it. I'm not sure she had to lie. I wouldn't have known. I would have caught if it. If not you, then me. It was a smart move from her. She seems candid. You think so? Being candid is the best way to lie. The mm. appearance of candor with some facts thrown in draws attention away from whatever one chooses to omit. She may be trying to control the pace of the investigation. Anyway, we should move. I suspect our inquiries will bring us back here soon enough. Okay, let's go back down and talk to the Hardy Boys again. And then it should probably be the end of our shift after we do that, maybe? And then we can speak to class, Classy. Oh, I keep forgetting how to say her name. It's you again. What is it? He acknowledges you gruffly. Okay, I want to talk about the hanging again. Let's. Classy says she wasn't raped. Fuck! I knew that fucking whore couldn't be trusted. You've hit a nerve. Mm. Titus is furious. No, more than that. Mm. The loyal Titus feels betrayed. For the record, Titus Hardy did not explicitly specify the victim as a whore, nor did he say anything about trusting her. Oh, shut up and stay out of this, Liz. Yeah. He raped her. He was out of his fucking mind. You have no idea. She's just in denial, asshole. You don't understand the traumatic experience. She's shutting down. And she doesn't fucking trust you. <laughs> yeah, she's crazy, you know. A crazy bitch. You know the type. She's fucked up. This is a diversion. Stay on track. Crazy? What are you talking about? She was very lucid. I did think that, yes, that she's a little crazy. Cut the bullshit. She told me the truth. Lawman, I'm at the end of my goddamn rope with you. I fucking told you not to push her. And you went and pushed her. I am gonna fucking... Something breaks in him. He takes a step closer and says, I'm gonna fucking... Titus Hardy. Her voice rings through the room like a warning shot. Success. Titus backs off. Fist down, everybody. Everard personally sent me to take care of this. If this goes south, we'll all be in the shit. But you, Titus Hardy, are going to be buried. Am I understood? When she's angry, she emphasizes the S. It gives her voice a strangely hypnotic quality. Her lips barely move as she speaks. Frankly, it's a bit terrifying. <laughs> Someone has to rush in to break the tension. The second in command. Look, Copper. We know that that fuck was a rapist and a killer. We got him confessing to it on tape. Show it to him, T. What's the he, harm, right? He turns to Titus, who's still breathing heavily. Here, jerkwad. Listen to this shit. And then come back and tell me the soldier of the apocalypse was an innocent man. This is their last play, this tape. Their story is in tatters. A mess. It might be nice to listen to, but at this point, you don't need to. Why should I care about the tape? You lied to me. So what's on the tape? Where did you get this tape? Where can I listen to this? That's enough for now. I'll get back to the invest. Why should I care about the tape? You lied to me. You don't care about evidence. The fuck are you a cop for then? His eye twitches. Big T. They don't care about getting the truth. They care about getting convictions. They are fucking keeping a score on their bulletin boards. I won't be on your bulletin board. If you don't listen to the tape, we got nothing to talk about. There's a lot of questions. If you ask them now, they'll just keep bringing up the tape. Mm. Listen to it, and they'll have nothing to hide behind. 
Where did you get this time? You think we go into this shit deaf and dumb? You RCM aren't the only ones who know how to bug people. There's no university degree for that. Actually, there are a few. Crypto analyst, radio officer. Actually, there are numerous degrees you can set in put get in signals intelligence. So you've bugged them. How? So you've bugged them. How? We have machines. We're in logistics. How do you think a harbor works? It's advanced stuff. Understood. You've listened in on their communications. How long? He takes a little note. Since way before their chief started taking swing lessons. Things got nice and quiet after that. Which one of you is doing this advanced radio work then? It's not advanced. You just hold up in a coop all day, writing down what they say. It gets hot as hell in there. Don't put yourself down, Angus. It's important work. The chief picks his beer back up to offer a silent toast. Yeah, man. You're like a radio genius or something. Those notes are some in-depth stuff. Indexes and shit. So what's on this toast? What's on it? We call it the Dorgon Omega Mix. You'll know why. Won't you listen to it? Now that is intriguing. You had me at Dorgon. Where can I listen to this? I'm sure we can find a tape player. The lieutenant whispers. Where can I listen to this? Why don't you try shoving it up your ass, genius? Yeah, play it with your ass, cocksucker. His voice echoes like thunder in the small room. I'm sure we can find a tape player. It's not a problem. He repeats calmly in a hushed voice. That's enough for now. I'll get back to the investigation. Don't forget your tape, lawman. Compliments of Titus Hardy. Take the tape, fine, I'll listen to it. Leave the tape, no thanks, Titus. I can get this wrapped up better without it. Take the tape, fine. You do that. Oh, and keep it. Maybe you'll need a reminder of human ugliness someday. I'm going to take off now. This bright orange medicine bowl declares the brand name pep, pep, peptide. Peptide. In a sunny, happy manner, someone has lost the bottle, but who cares? Can we sell it? I don't want to take it. I, I want to get him clean, you know? I, I don't. I want to get him off the drugs. I want to get him off the alcohol. Oh, there's the tape here. You stare at the great door gunner Megamix. If only you had a boombox, you would be able to play Titus's tape. Mm. The tape feels ominous. Upon it, the dead speak. Respect the tape. I think Roy sold a stereo that we can't buy because we've only got five dollars. Um, Ceiling has one as well, I think. The speakers below are banged yeah. up and worthless. The sneakers triumph over them. They're the star of the show here. So they they would be good, but they're fifty bucks. All right. Um. Let's go see Roy, maybe. The boomboxes wait on the shelves. $12. And your boombox, that gold and amber, Harmon Walshi, stares at you longingly with its tape reel eyes. Can we can can I just play a tape on one of them boomboxes real quick? Sorry, man. I can't be giving out freebies. Never have, won't now. Can I get a discount on this boombox? A police discount? A discount? I do have to keep the lights on, man. It's 12 real. He seems like an experimental man. And what Sonic experience is more experimental than the Door Gunner Megamix? Certainly it'd give you a discount if he knew you'd play that. I don't even have 10. Hmm. I'm not just doing any police work. I've got the door door gunner mega mix here, an error defining work. Let's do four real. Four real is offensively low, but just this once, for the music awesome. concrete cop. Awesome. Thanks for the discount, man. Here's the money for the boombox. And here you are, quality awesome. sound reproduction on the go. It'll play anything, wherever. Turn any tape into a conversation of sounds and shapes. The portal reel 
is just what you needed. The reels attach to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is rooted behind the magnetic reader. By the tape. You push, come on, sir. And the tape starts spinning. Violent static and machine sounds fill the air. This isn't Remishar. This is a fucking village. I can almost see the elephants. What kind of machinery? The harbor. That's the son of a Kvalsund crane. Okay. When this shit is done, I'm gonna tear that place up. Soldier of the Apocalypse style. Kill shit. Dogs and chickens too. Gonna run a room, Cordy. A real nice room. I don't give a shit. I'm fucking done. I'm done mentally. I'll fucking do them all in. Rape that disco cunt on the counter. You know, the dance of whore upstairs. Do it Kohoi style. Never did get that taste out of my mouth. The lieutenant presses the button marked Arete on your porter reel. The tape stops spinning. What was that at the very end? Silence? End of recording. What do you think? It seemed authentic enough. Probably recorded off the shortwave, then edited to seem more incriminating. He sounded like he was on patrol around the harbour walls. I agree. He also sounded inebriated. Still. The lieutenant looks at the tape. You are familiar with this look now. It is look of suspicion. There's more going on here than we know. Who's this Cordy? He's one of the guys. Cordy could be short for Cortenar, one of the other mercenaries, yeah. the one he was talking to. Mm. Probably the mountain at the harbour gates. Mr. Right to Work. Mm. What's Cohoy? A village on the Samaran Isola in South Safri. Grad committed war crimes there, the kind of thing he talks about. You think he was there? Who knows? Maybe the tattoos would have an answer. We would need to know the story of this man's service. A symbol of Soldier of the Apocalypse style conduct in a civil environment. Okay, then what now? I think we've got a few more questions for class here, don't yeah. you? Yeah. This seems to contradict her testimony, mm -hmm. at least to some degree. Mm -hmm. As you take out the tape, the boombox tunes itself back to the cheery radio again, spewing out beats like it's a Friday night. The contrast feels chilly, inappropriate. Our shift ends in 15 minutes, I think. Alright, let's go back to class, to that lady. Officer, what brings you up here in the rain? Legendary. Yeah. Titus Hardy gave us a recording where the deceased states his intention to commit rape. She puts her coffee cup down. This does not surprise her. Mm. Did he? I never said he was a good man. Or that he had good intentions. Only that he was never bad to me. She doesn't care. If anything, she sounds amused. On this tape, he specifically identifies you as the target. Mm, where did they get this recording, exactly? It's intercepted radio chatter of the deceased, recorded via the encryption station. It's authentic enough. Does he say he's gonna do it Soldier of the Apocalypse style? She arches her brow. Those are the exact words he used. Something to that effect. Yeah, exact words. Yeah. That was practically his pickup line. He picks the cup. She picks the cup back up. Did he say whores a lot? Yeah. Was he pretty much on the verge of doing it co holly style? Yes, the word whore was used. co -hoy was mentioned. He wasn't actually there. He didn't do a tour, or at least didn't tell me he did. Would have been overkill anyway. He lived his own little co -hoy. It wasn't his everything. Why say things like that, machismo? Do you think he was trying to scare pe Yeah, machismo? Yes, w was he bragging? Oh no, I'm pretty sure he did all those things. Then integrated them into his idea of normalcy. 
to keep on living until they just sort of turn into his, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Coping mechanism, catchphrase percent coping mechanism. Running joke. I was going to say running joke. And it sounds like you didn't even get the good bits. Lely's punchlines got way, way funkier than that. It was like the Semenese conflict, the Kohoi massacre, and the 36 famine in Yezut all rolled into one person, then cast in Norani's ceramic armor, which he wore in bed and in the shower. What? Weren't you afraid? You like this kind of stuff and you spent time with this person romantically and you like this kind of stuff? We're all scraping up any happiness we can find, officer. Going around with our little scouring sticks. You, your first love, Mr. Kohoi here. Did he tell you he had actually done any of those things? He and Martinez, I mean? No. We were too busy laying waste to our own nervous systems to direct any of the fury outward. He seemed... He seemed happy, I guess. At ease. As much as a man like him could be. There was a small measure of pride in her, that she could quell the rage yeah. in such a being. What kind of man was he? Before you go, ask for details. She seems okay to talk about it. Thank you for clearing that up, miss. Whenever you're ready. I'm interested to hear what Titus Hardy has to say now. She takes a very small sip of her coffee and smiles. Now that you've had some time, can you tell us more about the victim? Like, for example, his name? Actually, officer, I didn't know his name. I just called him Lely. A nickname? I guess. He came from Lely's dad. It's short for that. And it was his army name, apparently. Mm -hmm. He said his real name wasn't his. I tried to pry it out of him, but it was no use. Lelystad. That's a good start. The lieutenant writes it down in his notebook. It just occurred to me, colleague. We still haven't performed the field autopsy on the deceased. The questions I have assume some kind of foreknowledge on our part. I suggest we go and perform it now and return once we've brought ourselves up to date. Okay, let's go. I have other questions first. All right, but quickly. She has endured that sight long enough. It's time for us to do our duty. The young woman nods in silent approval, then feeds herself another cigarette. All right, let's return to this later. It's you again. What is it? it? He acknowledges you roughly. So I talked to Klasky about the tape. And? And nothing. She stands by what she said. That fucking fucker. You're the worst cops in Revishaw. I gave you gold on that tape. That fucker wasn't aimed at you. Yeah, I know. It was at her. Gold? It was just locker room talk. It's not evidence. It was dark stuff, but it didn't prove anything, and it didn't change her mind. Yeah, it was bad, honestly. I expected it to have more effect. She pretty much laughed it off, Titus. It was dark stuff. Dark. Dark is when you start a goddamn death rock band. He said he'd rape her. He shakes his head in disbelief. Sounds like he wanted it to change her mind about the hanged man. This is definitely personal. Mm-hmm. What did she have to say then? Fine by her? This is what people are supposed to be like? Fucking whoop de doo She did not say whoop de doo It did not come as a surprise to her and she definitely wasn't scared. Actually, I think it made her a little nostalgic. If anything, she seemed turned on by the whole door running thing. Um, it did not come as a surprise to her and she definitely wasn't scared. Yes, in fact, I think she thought it was a little funny. Funny? No good goddamn psycho whore. Tardis mumbles, his lips barely moving. Seems like they wanted to give Clasia a second Clasia. chance to play along. She still didn't. Alright. Oh. All fucking righty then. I guess it's good then. That fucking... Please try to control yourself in the presence of visitors, Titus. 
Her voice is a bit softer than earlier. This is just perfect. Just fucking perfect. Any thoughts on this, lawman? Pardus rubs his chin with his palm as if trying to grind it smooth. You don't have to say everything out loud. Just mix and match. I think this is personal for you. I think you had feelings for her. I think you had a lie planned, but she didn't play along. Maybe she isn't who you thought she was. Maybe she's still in denial, you know, like a defense mechanism. Be straight with me, Titus. What really happened? I think it is personal for you. I think you had feelings for her. Yeah, they're all queers. Can't bump hard fist or anything. What? Glenn, <laughs> Glenn explodes with indignation. Everyone's got feelings for each other. Where are you going with this? It's all what? right, Glenn. I just thought she... I thought anyone would come around if they heard that shit. Apparently, I was wrong. Yeah, that was fucked up. He smiles sympathetically. He wanted her to see the man for what he was. Mm. Now that you know, you might want to lay off this topic, or else you might antagonize him. I just got too worked up. Big man lost his shit. It's cool now. Be straight with me, Titus. What really happened? I already told you. We fucking hanged him. He puts his giant face in his hands and sighs. There's less gusto in his voice now. Yeah. His men too are growing increasingly silent. Mm. They're confused. This is growing over their heads. Yeah. Come on, Titus. The stakes are too high here. There will be blood on the street. The tribunal, remember? I know you're tired. Why don't you just... You know what? I am tired. I'm tired of you. Them. And the whore upstairs. Next time you see her, tell her. Titus said. Fuck off! He throws his beer can down. That lion scamming. We're done. This is over. You understand? Your little investigation is over. Yeah. There is silence in the room. Elaine starts saying something, then thinks best not to. What is this quiet funeral shit? What we need is some beers in us. Bartender, 20 beers for the dock workers' union. Why do we make it 40, huh? Why do we make it 100 beers? You're not loud enough. 100 beers? Now we're talking. Hoppity hop over here, cafeteria manager. Frederick Godly <laughs> convinced Titus he's being manipulated. Ooh, understand why Titus is upset. Angus can't take pressure. Warned about the tribunals. Discuss. Ooh. Convinced Titus he's being manipulated. Clasia is what? playing them like a fiddle. Tell them how bad they got played, and they'll tell you the truth. There Fuck. are many ways to go about it. All of them really good. Why did I get that? You guys are always telling me they're good and then they and then they are. Okay, man, it's clear you've been played like a fiddle, play an imaginary fiddle. I know what's going on here. I've been wrong too. I got this feeling that I got this fucking dark shadow over my heart. I'm going to tell you a little story about Kim here. Kim, I'm going to need your gun again. <laughs> you guys are always telling me they're good and then they aren't. What? Isn't that just going to make him angry? I'm just going to say the first one. Those are the other guys. My shit is solid gold. You can trust me. Can I? All those ideas look really bad. Okay, but please, I can't afford to fail now. I've come to... Can I? Those ideas look really bad. Oh, you don't like these arguments. Let's see you come up with your own then. Come on. Everyone's waiting. Where are they? Why is Goldmouth mean to him? Something is wrong. It doesn't look like he's succeeding. Whatever. Just do the fiddle thing, sire. It'll be artistic. And if you've already done it, do it again. 
Okay, man, it's clear you're being played like a fiddle, play an imaginary fiddle. No, we fucking ain't, asshole. No one's fiddling anyone in here. <laughs> no, no, Glenn. I want to hear this. Who do you think is fucking fiddling me? Who do you think? Keep playing the imaginary fiddle, grin sagely. Tis pity she's a whore, wink. Perform a dramatic finale on the imaginary fiddle. The hunter becomes the hunter. You promised there would be good options. Where are they? <laughs> God. Oh, you want more good options. Here we go. So good. I mean, your sweet little plaything upstairs. More fiddle playing. Tardis, pussy boy. Dramatically put the fiddle down. You and I both know where this is going. Who do you think? Keep playing the fiddle. Sage grin, grin sagely. Good lord, what's happening to me? Look up. Perform a dramatic. Oh, all right. The hunter becomes the hunter. The hunter becomes the hunter. A little tip for you, cop. The next time you try to fuck with someone's head, make sure you're not fucked there yourself. I don't want to make the them angry at her, you know? I don't want them to kill her or hurt her. I don't understand what happened. Why Neither did do you I. say that? Because I everything was shit. That, put the fiddle down and never go off script like that again. I'm leaving. Is our shift done now or? I'll see you in the morning. Okay.